Hey everybody, I'm SK from The Haunting Grounds and today I just wanted to share with you the only prop that we were able to get completed for the 2011 Halloween season, uh, the Cauldron Creep. Now the Cauldron Creep is not my own idea, it uh, comes from a gentleman who goes by the name of Devil's Chariot, um, a really talented individual, uh, really creative, and uh, this, is, this is his idea. The kudos go out to him for this one, but uh, I made a few changes for mine. That uh, to suit my needs, and I'll uh, share with you some of those changes and show you how this whole thing works, and then we'll get it all fired up and uh, show you it in action. So let's take a closer look here. One thing I wanted to add to my cauldron creep was a fire pit for up underneath the cauldron. Uh, this gives a nice glow up under the cauldron and looks like we're actually cooking something here. So uh, what I did was I started with a couple pieces of a leftover scrap styrofoam from a tombstone project. Uh, sanded and shaped those to look like rocks. Uh, spray painted them with a coat of black spray paint to really uh, it eats into the foam and gives it a nice texture. Gives it a realistic look. Uh, then a couple of coats of uh, black uh, paint and then a couple of dry brushed coats of different shades of gray uh, turned out really nice it worked well and then up underneath here we have a string of amber LED lights hot glued into place and a couple of those bulbs are uh, covered with uh, ping pong balls glued into place now the cauldron this is a cauldron that I had built a few years ago for another project it's just a rope handled plastic tote I uh, picked up at Walmart's for a couple bucks. Uh, I took and cut out several pieces of crescent shaped cardboard and glued them, this sort of ribs, all the way around this every uh, probably every three quarters of an inch or so. Uh, then I covered that with some duct tape, uh, a couple layers of duct tape, and then a uh, couple layers of paper mache. This is probably going to need a facelift in the next year or so, but. Uh, does the trick. It's a pretty convincing cauldron, especially in the dark. You don't see all these rib lines like you can see here with the uh, lights shining on it. But uh, does the trick and it made a pretty good looking cauldron. Inside of the cauldron we have a couple things going on here. We have our uh, Monster Guts wiper motor. Now this is the motor that operates the stick, that turns the stick around inside of the cauldron. Uh, the stick just sits inside of this PVC cap that's uh, bolted down to this arm here. Uh, the cap is filled up with some hot glue to keep the stick from binding up as it turns. And uh, the stick really just sits in there. One thing I did was I took um, some soapstone and ran it around the inside here of this cap and uh, all over the, uh, the hot glue and rounded off the end of the stick here and covered that with the uh, soapstone as well. That really makes a nice smooth operation here and keeps the stick from binding up too much as it uh, makes its cycle. Another thing that I added was this little LED color changing light uh, meant to throw in pumpkins but uh, I threw this inside here and what it does is it gives a nice uh, color changing effect to the fog as the fog comes up through the uh, cauldron. Now another change that I had made here is instead of mounting the motor down to the base of the cauldron and have the fog blowing straight up out of the cauldron, uh, I wanted the, the fog to kind of roll out. So what I did was I, I raised this platform a couple inches with a couple of pieces of 2x2 two two, and uh, the fog comes up through this bottom piece here and hits this top piece and just kind of spreads out in all directions. It uh, worked out really nice, made a nice effect. Another change that I made from the original is the eyes here. I uh, didn't have the roll on any perspirant balls or the green LED bulbs to, to make those nice eyes. So uh, I had to come up with an alternative. Uh, what I did have was a couple of LED moonlight spotlights from an old fish tank setup. Uh, I took those apart, uh, shoved them, uh, hot glued them in the backs of the eye sockets and uh, they, they were a little too bright so I covered them up with these uh, pieces of ping pong ball. I just uh, kind of shoved that in there and just 
threw a little bit of dark paint up around it and just kind of dirtied it up so when the lights are off it still looks all right and uh, when the lights are on it really dissipates that light uh, nicely. Now the body of the skeleton here is just uh, styrofoam bones from a bag of bones kit and uh, they're fixed to a half inch PVC frame and you can see the frame there is just uh, built to hold the bones in place and painted black so that it kind of blends in with the uh, with the clothing with the cloth that's draped over it. The uh, left arm here is a, a rigid arm and that just uh, works to support um, the stick at the top. Uh, the uh, right arm is just a marionette arm that just kind of dangles here. Um, it's animated by the motion of the stick when the stick goes around in the cauldron. Uh, the rib cage for our skeleton here, this is just uh, some tightly rolled newspapers. You can see this uh, little pointing stick that I'm using here. This is just tightly rolled newspaper uh, covered with duct tape. And then I use these, I just form these, bend them around, they bend real nice, they're stiff. And you can work them into any position really that you want. So I bended those into shape and formed a, uh, a rib cage covered it with paper mache and then painted it to match the color of the bones. Uh, the head motion, you can see here, we have a three quarter inch PVC T, or I'm sorry, it's not even a T, it's a cross. And this just kind of sits on here loose and the uh, motor in the back works this head up and down. And I'll show you how that works. The, uh, the skull here, uh, this is a resin skull from Big Lot. Uh, I was going to use a foam skull but I just uh, wasn't wasn't satisfied with the look of it so I opted for this resin skull which looks pretty good. It's it's not quite as heavy as a Lindbergh skull or a Bucky skull. Uh, a little bit heavier than the foam. Mm. And here you can see the mechanics for the head movement. Uh, this is just a little 5 RPM motor uh, from uh, allelectronics.com. Uh, it's mounted to a piece of uh, plywood here, plywood scrap that's bolted onto the frame. Uh, the disc, uh, this is just a piece of acrylic that I had laying around. I used a Dremel circle cutter to cut this out. I drilled a couple holes in it and uh, works nicely to make a nice compact uh, mechanism for the head movement. And then this uh, this cage here, uh, I threw that in place just to kind of protect the uh, mechanism and uh, the moving parts from getting tangled up with the uh, with the fabric. And uh, it seemed to work out pretty well. Now the sound for this unit, I used an old uh, surround sound system for a computer I had uh, picked up a few years ago and I've always used this to run the music for our haunt. Uh, it has uh, a front and a rear channel so I was able to pump the music out of uh, the front channel and just run the sound to a couple of uh, small satellite speakers uh, that come as part of this uh, unit and uh, I ran those out to underneath the cauldron. They're small enough where they sit up underneath the cauldron nice, uh, well hidden, and uh, this made uh, a good solution for getting some sound out to it. And now we'll take a look at uh, how everything looks when it's on, minus the fog. Of course, I'm not gonna turn the fog on uh, inside the house here, but uh, you get an idea on how this whole thing comes together. really is a fantastic prop idea. Inexpensive, a relatively simple build, and uh, just, a, just a great prop. Now we'll take a look at uh, how that looked on Halloween night. 
Okay, here we are. October 31st, Halloween night, 2011. And here's our uh, cauldron creep. A new prop for this here. In action. Fog machine is all hooked up. 